All right, y'all, we back with part two. We're going to pick up where we left off at, man. Landon, you were saying something about, uh, you remember where we left off at? You were saying something about being faithful. I'm going to take a shot because you just said you was fucked up. I want to get where you at. I'll take a shot. <laughs> I was saying... What I learned was that when you commit, you have to commit selflessly. You have to commit selflessly. You can't commit to someone with, with your own desires in the forefront. You can't commit feeling like if you don't get what you want out of the situation that, you know, shit's not working. You can't. Salud. Yeah, you have to commit selflessly. A lot of lessons to learn, though, man. It's, it's not just about the lessons you learn in, in a relationship or the lessons you learn to be in relationships. It's also the lessons you learn to be disciplined yourself, you know what I'm saying, that contribute to your relationships because it helps you grow as a person. Right. I've learned a lot of, I've learned a lot of personal lessons. Right. Um. We actually had a, a few questions that people left for you. Ah, interesting. Go for it. Um, in the comments, we had a few questions. And uh, so one was, someone says, uh, so my question for the next episode is this. So you ever have a hard time funneling the passion for your music in a consistent basis? I experienced great loss like you have, and sometimes I've and sometimes I find it hard to connect with my passion through my pain. How do you feel about that? There's a lot of ways to answer this question. Um, but just to, just to make sure, the main question this person is asking is, do I have a hard time being consistent with music? Yeah, being, I guess, being with all that you've been through. Just one more time, say the say just the question. The question is, so you ever have a hard time funneling the passion for your music in a consistent basis? Okay. So what I'm taking that as is, can I just, in general, can I be consistent with my music and my passion for music um, in, in relation to my pain from a loss? Um. <clears throat> If you guys saw the the show where I'm performing a song for my brother, you know, as much as I like that song, it wasn't something I loved. I didn't love that song. No song feels good enough. So whenever I would sing that song, I'd be like, this isn't it. You know, so it's very hard to be consistent uh, with your passion in relation to your pain. It's, it's hard. Not impossible, though. I just feel like all my feelings are not going to be satisfied from my pain. Not all of them are going to be satisfied. That's a billion songs. Doesn't mean right. don't do it. Well. It, means, it means do a billion songs. You know what I'm saying? It means do it anyways. But uh, being consistent, it's hard, man, because you'll reach that one point of a song that you more or less you know, you do or don't want to feel the rest of that week, the rest of that day. I don't know if I want to feel these feelings today. You know, it's hard. But, but uh, you find a place. You find a place of comfort where you can get it done. It just takes time to heal. We have somebody else. Terrence asked a question and said, um, how's your relationship with Alicia and how is your relationship with the Brown family. <laughs> you know, one of those is much easier to answer. Um, my relationship with Alicia is great. My relationship with Alicia is great. I know that she gets a lot of shit from the rest of my family, and they're not wrong. You know what I mean? The, my family has, everybody has a different relationship with her. My relationship with her, she doesn't talk to me like uh, like she's keeping secrets. She doesn't talk to me disrespectfully. You know what I'm saying? If anything, when we she and I speak, it's so candid that we could probably pull back on how honest we are with each other. So she shows me a different kind of respect than I've probably seen her show other people. But I'm her bonus son, you know? So I almost kind of 
not expect that, but you know, I'm saying I welcome that. Because that also means that I'm going to have a million opportunities to be a good big brother to my siblings through her. So our relationship is good. Um, our relationship is great. My relationship with the Brown family, you know, that's hit or miss because it's not like the Brown family is made of three people. You know what I mean? Really? The Brown family is made up of so many people that play such major roles. My relationship with Monty Coop is solid. Monty Coop shows me love. Monty Coop is, she's the fucking greatest among us. So Monty Coop, she, she just keeps us, nobody knows. Nobody understands. Uh, Monty Cooper just hit me up just to say she loves me and tell me have a blessed day. You know what I mean? That's kind of individual she is in my life. Uh, Monty Tina, I don't really get to talk to Monty Tina. You know what I mean? And when I do talk to Monty Tina, I'm not sure if she's actually telling me everything. You know, so so it makes me feel a little bit guarded. I love her though, and we don't have any beef. Monty Lily, she thinks I don't like her. I don't understand where she got this from. If you didn't hear me say it, then it never was said. If I don't like someone, I tell them to their face, I don't fucking like you. I because I have no fear for man. I have no fear for women. I have no fear for human beings. None. So if I don't fucking like you, then I'll tell you to your face, I don't fucking like you. And we're not going to do this beat around the bush game where we pretend to like each other. I'm not going to do that. But I love Monty Lee. She thinks I don't like her. It really sucks. Because she treated me really nicely when I was a young man. She really she really went above and beyond to try to treat me like one of her own sons. Yeah, you know, Monty uh, Lee was always... Um... Auntie Lily was like always like a mother figure to me as well. Um, right. Yeah, growing up. I don't yeah. know where the fuck this shit comes yeah. from. Yeah. We had a little falling out um, around the time when me and Kelsey got stabbed in the club with the whole BMF thing. Um, yeah, yeah. I, heard, you know, I heard about that. Yeah, We had our falling out then, and I we really haven't had much of a relationship since then, but... um. You know, I still love her. I don't hold no ill will. I, I, I want to get her on the show. Everybody, I had a few people comment. They want to see uh, see her on the show. So I'm going I'm to I'm get her on the show. I'm, a... I'm just in my head, like, when did I ever say I didn't like Auntie Leela? That's never happened. I've never even spoken badly about her. I've never even spoken badly about her in conversation that I don't think she'll ever hear. I've never even spoken to my wife negatively about my Aunt Lily. And she, she for some reason, thinks I don't like her, but I don't get it. You know, I don't get it because probably everything, there. probably because everything that touched the media concerning Auntie Lily and uh, Alicia and your and your and your and your pops, she fuck probably me. feels like you feel a certain type of way oh, about shit. She is no, no, fuck that shit, fuck that. Don't give anybody it out. We're all adults now. We're all adults now. I don't put shit on anyone in our family about whether or not they like that. That does not happen over here. If Sorry, you, I think you're frozen. You there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm, yeah. I'm here. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? You got, you got, that, you got that cricket Wi-Fi. That's the got. internet connection is unstable. You got, that, you got that cricket Wi-Fi. That's what it is. <laughs> a little can, more. So, can, look, look, look. Am I good this now? My, yeah, you're good now. Look, okay, this, I'm is good my, now. Okay. this is my example right here. This is going to kill it. This is my example. On the news tomorrow, on the news tomorrow, they say Shane Brown, terror, terror to the world. Is your first thought that I don't fuck with you? No, of course not. <laughs> See, I know what kind of person you are. So you're the kind of person, if you don't fuck with me, you're going to let me know. Nobody's going to know that you don't fuck with me before I know. I right, bet, bet. We don't talk every day. Shit, we don't talk every month. Shit, we barely talk every year. You know what I mean? Like, but whenever you and I get back together, it's like it's like no time was missed. You know what I mean? So for anybody to take something in the media, like you said, for anybody, anyone in this family to take something in the media and apply it to everyone in the family or or just me, it's like, come on, man. C come on. Come on. The whole reason I like uh uh uh, uh What's it called? Uh, oatmeal pies. It's because I'm pretty really, sure. I have my pretty, kids eat oatmeal pies. I'm pretty sure, you God, know. Um, damn it, shiz. You, this cricket, it's cricket Wi Fi, man. 
My shit is still going out. You, I'm, you looking I'm good. You look, man, hey man, you gotta come. Looking on, good. Man. You looking good on my end. Come to AT and T, baby. Um, yeah, cause I I got Wi Fi over here like a small business. Yeah, should I got? I thought I had good Wi Fi over here. Is my am I better now? Yeah, you better now. I'm not gonna keep going in on on what Auntie Lily said, man, because I don't I don't. See, my whole thing is this too, like. Shit, I'm pretty sure there was some motherfuckers who were surprised that you was on here because they feel like I didn't have much good shit to say about Alicia on the first episode. But I didn't have shit bad to say about it. You know, I just spoke my truth. I didn't bash her. Look, man, you have look. You can't even worry about people being like upset about you speaking your truth, man. If you have a family member, you know, what I'm saying it's on your head about some shit that you said on social media. And just tell them how you felt. You know what I mean? That's an opportunity for growth and for learning. You know what I mean? If they feel offended, you tell them, oh, shit, I didn't think you, weren't, I didn't think you were going to be offended. I was just being honest. But, you know what I'm saying? The next time I feel like saying some super honest shit, just know that that's where our relationship is. Because I'm going to be honest. Right. You know what I mean? And, and then you guys grow from there. Or you don't. Right. Mm-mm-mm. mm mm Frozen again, yeah. bro. I didn't hear nothing you said. Should I went out again? No, I got you now. I got you now. Okay. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't just say nothing. But um, That's all. it's growth, man. It's growth. You know what I'm saying? It's right. Alicia hasn't said nothing negative about about you ever. Not to me, at least. She's never said anything negative about you to me, ever, bro. Ever. You know you can trust me. She ain't never said no shit about you to me. Yeah, I've never had, like I said on the episode, on the first episode, I said I'd never even had a, me and Alicia's never had a fallout out. Me and her never had no bad words, no ill will. She's never disrespected me. I never disrespected her. Um, yeah, well, I mean, you know, the answer, my, my bad. I, I went on a tangent because I talked too fucking much. The, uh, my, the answer to the question you asked me was that I, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very, very close with Alicia and I'm very, very, very close with my family up to 20% of the family. There's still a lot of my family I don't know. There's still a lot of family I don't that we don't talk just because we don't really know each other that well. You right. know what I mean? Not because not because of bad feelings, but because we just don't we just have we just don't talk. Right. Uh, and there's people I've lost touch with, I don't even have their number. Uh, yeah, but I mean that's that's it. There's no bad blood in this family. I don't have any bad blood with anybody. I think since uh, since Ma passed on, you know. Oh uh, yeah, the family's been disconnected since. The family's been disconnected since then. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And on, and on top of that, not just that, you know, I think now, you know, we're all grown and started started our own families and got our own lives going and everybody's, you know, working and surviving and take care of their household. You know, everybody just sort of fell into doing their own thing. Yeah, that's uh, how life works, right? That's why you grow right. apart with friends. That's right. why your opinion changes over the years. You just grow, man, and life just hits you so hard. We just went through a time where it's going to be in history books. Books. We're going to be in history books, yo. About the 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 generation of people that went through a global pandemic in the you know in the U.S. and mad people died, you know what I mean? And we're we're gonna we're gonna be in books about that. Right. Um, it, that's just how it works, man. We grow and our perspectives change. That's just how it is. Right, right, right. That was all the questions they gave you. Um. Let me see. Uh, uh, uh. They said, somebody said they would like more questions about your dad, but they didn't give the questions. I don't know if they wanted me to come up with them. I'm not going to do We'd that. like more questions about your dad. Oh, great. Um, well, um, his favorite song is Song For You. Um, do you think your dad is happy was one? Do I think he's happy? Yeah. That's interesting. 
I mean, how do you measure happiness, you know? But I, if I had to just answer briefly, like off the top of my head, I would say he is happy. But I say he's happy because not only is, not only is he in a space where he's not an alcoholic, he's not an alcoholic, he's not doing drugs, he's, you know what I'm saying, not getting drama from everybody in the world because of shit, because of shit people are saying. You know, he, he's living a, a life where he's not, he doesn't have to be as stressed out as he once had to be. Because let me ask you, this is a question. Have, have you ever dealt with damn, like addiction or something, like addicted to weed or, you know, just. I did. I did. I had a bad doctor. I had a really bad doctor. He got sued by mad people. He got sued by a ton of people. I, 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 wish, I, I wish I had his name off the top of my head so I could talk shit about him. He did my surgery wrong on my knee because I got knee surgery for my ACL. And he did my surgery wrong. He did all kinds of people's surgeries wrong. And um, now I got to get another surgery for my ACL because of him. But what he did was he gave me uh, unlimited amounts of pills, of, um, of Percocet, unlimited Percocet. Like, I didn't have to pay for it or nothing. I can just show up and get a, a bottle like this, a Percocet, and my leg was fucked up, man. Like, my leg was fucked up. He really, he really met, messed my knee up. And like, he messed my knee up so bad before I even got to take the medicine, right? It was the second day after my surgery. I went back to him sweating. And I was like, yo, this pain is unreal. I don't know what's going on, but this pain is unbearable i can't i can't do this i can't sleep I, I i'm stressed out so he's like let me see it and he unbandaged my shit and was like he was like yeah there's a there's a problem going on here uh we'll have to figure this out so he was like let me get my nurses and i still had the staples in my leg and all kind of shit man and um and uh after that i was like you know what he fessed up about you know about it being something being fucked up Maybe I can trust this guy. And this medicine, maybe he's right. Maybe I should take this medicine. I took that medicine, man, and I couldn't stop taking it. I couldn't stop taking it, man. I was a zombie. I was a zombie every day. It was horrible. And then um, I can't remember what happened that made me realize it. I can't remember what, what happened. But something happened to where I was like, Am I taking this medicine because my leg is hurting or am I taking this medicine because I want to table. take it? Well, I, was, I, was th I told myself, am I taking this medicine because I need to take it or am I taking this medicine because I, I want to take it? So I took, I took my bottle of pills and I poured it down uh, the toilet. I poured it down the toilet and Whatever it, pain I had in my knee, I was like, you gotta fucking deal with it. You gotta suck it up and just fucking deal with it, man. So how how long was you how long was you battling 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 that addiction? A year. A year. And it got even worse because I'm not gonna name names, but the close there were very close people around me who were who were taking it with me to the point where they would come in my room and they would low-key steal peel, pills out of my out of my bottle. Because they were addicted too, you know. But when I poured it all down the drain, everybody everybody had to shut up because I was the person that had it. You know what I mean? So I poured it down the drain. Now nobody gets any, and we are, we all have to get over it. You know what I mean? But after that, now whenever my doctor, my new doctor, whenever she's like, "Oh, we gotta you gotta take this, you gotta take that," I, I'll be like, "No, nah, I'm not. I'm not okay with taking pills." Like like explain to me more about about this process. Because right. I'll never go through that again, bro. Never. Right. Never. And that's crazy. How was it though? It wasn't. It wasn't bad. I didn't feel it. You're frozen again. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's. It's, it's raining and thundering out here by me. So it's throwing. It's throwing my damn connection right. off a bit. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yo, you gotta fly up here, man, to come come on, let me treat you, man. Come through. We we'll go to the gun range, you know what I'm saying? Shoot a little bit, be, be dudes, you know what I'm saying? Have some drinks. We got to, man. 
cook you some, cook you some steaks on the grill. You know what I mean? Jump in the pool. You know yeah, I mean? I definitely. I, we we definitely got to do something, plan something uh, ASAP for sure, man. For, for real, yeah, man. Come on, you know, don't talk about it, be about it. It's definitely long overdue, cause uh, yeah, man, bring you. Come on, bring bring your girl or bring your kid, man. Yeah, bring, yeah, I bring yeah the whole fam, yeah. Um, you know what? We gonna we gonna plan. Who? We gonna we gonna plan something like that. That was all the questions they gave you that said they want to talk more about my dad. Yeah, you know, a lot of people got this. Uh, a lot of the comments, if you go look on the uh, video was saying, you know, that I was probably mad. I was mad because Uncle B, your dad, cut the Brown family off and shit like that. So, you know, a lot of people are probably su were surprised to see you on the show and the unity that that the uh, that we actually do have. <laughs> because, you know, the perception to the world is that, you know, we probably all so dysfunctional. We don't none of us fuck with each other for real. No, nah, that's. I wish that you know what I'm saying that I can give everybody a better understanding. But you know, it's not my job. It's not my job. It's not your job either. As soon as you tell, as soon as you try to give people more information about what our family is like, they're already forming opinions about what you're talking about while you're talking. You'll never be able to convince someone of some shit they don't believe in. You'll never be able to convince someone of something they already have the answers for. They don't want to hear your answers. They just want to hear their own echo. They want to hear you say what they thought. Right. You know what I mean? Let me ask you this though, because uh, you ever met a celebrity who you 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 might have liked their music and then you met them in person and you was like, damn, you get, you're such an asshole. I don't even like you no more. Uh, Brian McKnight and Glenn Lewis, straight up. Brian McKnight and Glenn Lewis? That motherfucker has the best vocals in the world, Brian McKnight. Maybe, uh, well, Brian McKnight is cold. I'm not gonna say the best vocals in the world. Brian McKnight is cold as fuck. Uh, Glenn Lewis, cold as fuck. But Brian McKnight was a complete asshole when I met him. Um, his son, BJ, is actually a, he's a very cool person. His son Nico, even cooler person. Uh, but Brian McKnight, when I met him, wasn't great. And uh, Glenn Lewis, when I met him, he was so cocky, man. I was about to have to fuck him up. You know what <laughs> I mean? He was on some shit where he was talking. He was talking about me in front of people, and they were like, "Do you understand who that is?" Hear this. Hear this. Hear this. Hear this. I was with a chick, and he was like, "Hey, what's up?" Blah 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 blah. And she was like. You know I came here with Landon Brown, right? And she was like, he was like, yeah, I know, I know you came here with that nigga. And she was like, you know who he is, right? And he was like, yeah, that's Bobby Brown's son. So what? She was like, no, no, no. It, it's not that he's Bobby Brown's son. You know that he likes to fight a lot. You know that, right? It's not about him being Bobby Brown's son. You understand that he's gonna come over here if, you, if he hears you talking shit. And he's gonna want to fuck you up. You know that, right? Right. <laughs> then he left. Then he left. Got the hell on. Yeah. Disrespectful until he heard that I was about that life. I was like, forget it, man. And I really loved his music. I loved his music, man. I did. I listened to his CD all the time, man. I was a fan. I was a fan. But you disrespect me. Uh, T.I. once said, uh, um, violation makes demonstration mandatory. And I, I live by that, man. I live by that. I live by that. I don't treat anyone, I don't treat anyone in a way that I don't want to be treated. If you disrespect me on the spot, I will ask you to step outside. Because I have no fear for a man. I don't care how big you are. I don't care who you are. You disrespect me. We 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 got to figure this out because now I have no respect for you. We have you seen Glenn Lewis since? Nope. Sure haven't. Sure haven't. But I'll, I'll say this on the record right now. If I saw Glenn Lewis again, and he was like, hey, man, I saw a video where, you know, where I said some disrespectful things about you. So what's up? I'd be like, what's up? What, what do you mean? I'm, I'm, a, I'm dressed. Let's, I'm outside. Let's go. 
You know what I mean? I, I'm not, I don't, I'm not backing down from no man. But if the man approached me and was like, yo, I saw you a few years ago, I was disrespectful, then I would immediately be like, it's all good. So if he I'm can't, not look, so I'm not looking for so, drama shit. All right, so 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 if, if I just uh, don't I don't shy away from a battle. All right, so would, would you be open to a uh a boxing match? You versus Glenn Lewis? Uh, you're hilarious. I think, <laughs> I think that um, if if Glenn Lewis ever challenged me to a boxing match, I'd want it to be private. I wouldn't want it to be a televised thing because I, I don't want to do it for money. I want to do it for respect. Okay. I want to do it for respect. You disrespected me. You know what I'm saying? That was mad years ago. Mad years ago. You disrespected me. We're not friends. Right. If you want to clear up this disrespect, through a, a through combat, I'm about this life. All Otherwise, right. we can part ways. You don't gotta speak to me, I gotta speak to you. Just just you know what I'm saying? Take the long route when you see me. I mean, but if he challenged me to a boxing match, I would accept. I would accept. But it wouldn't it wouldn't be something I would I want to do for clout. It wouldn't be for clout. It'd be for the art of combat. I love the art of combat. Okay. Okay. I agree. I agree with that. I like that. I like that. I like that. So right now, if you if you could get a, a feature from anyone right now. A feature? On a project, yeah, on a project. Who who would who who would you uh who would that person be? If like I who's your be. dream who's your like your dream feature? Man, that's tough because I that's tough. That's really, really tough, man. Um my first mind, my first mind says Joyner Lucas. Joyner Lucas. My first, my first mind says Joyner Lucas, but at the same time, my first mind is also in conflict because my first mind also says Eminem. Mm, I, 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 I would. I ain't expect you to song, say. I ain't expect you to say Eminem. I'd hop on any song with Eminem, man. If I, man, if I, man, that. I ain't expect I, you to say M. He was like, hey, you know, we, we'd like to have your vocals on the song. I'd be like, hey, man, I'm up at 8 a.m. What's up? Where, uh, where y'all going to be at? Send me the location. I'll come through. Mm. What's up? I can go there I by myself. I didn't expect you to say him. Well, here's the thing. Whitney, Whitney sent me to a camp when I was in seventh grade. She sent me to a camp in, in Massachusetts. And uh, I didn't really have much with me. I mean, and that wasn't her fault. It wasn't her fault because she was she set up the camp for me. She was like, okay, have fun, son. You know what I mean? And I was like, all right. You know what I'm saying? But the the person who dropped me off, I'm not gonna name no names. The person who dropped me off didn't know that I wasn't prepared and they didn't prepare me. Like I was a child and right. they didn't prepare me for going to a camp uh where I was gonna be there every day. There it wasn't like a I'll come pick you up tonight, camp. It was okay. So you were staying the night there every no, yeah. For a month. Oh wow, damn. For a month. So all I had with me was a few changes of clothes, no money. Um, I had a sheet, <laughs> um, a pillow. No, I didn't have a pillow, I had a sheet. I had a portable DVD player with one DVD. Um uh, uh, uh head of head of state. I think that's what it's called with Gene Hackman and Will Smith. And um, and I had the Eminem CD. And I listened to that CD every night. I listened to it over and over again. I was like, this is the shit. That's all I had for a month to listen to every single day. Right. So listening to his growth, listening to who he is today, motherfuckers the lyricist, man. He was saying he's saying some crazy stuff. Right. He said he'd be ter a terrible magician because he'll fuck a trick up, right? <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. I, I don't feel that way about the ladies. It's not how I live my life. I have daughters, but it was still very, very funny. Right. <laughs> your, how, 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 how'd you how'd you like living in uh, Mendham with Auntie Whitney? It was interesting, man. It was uh, it was interesting. I mean, that's a long conversation, man, because. There's a lot of there's a, a lot of milestones for me. You know what I mean? Like I had already lost my virginity. I, that's when I was trying to figure it out. I was trying to figure hey, out because I'm still out. fucked up on the thing on, on you saying you lost your virginity at eleven having a threesome, man. 
You know, I, I didn't say that. The way you said it is not how I said it. But, but you didn't say having a threesome, but that's what it was. It was two women who came was, and picked you up from school. It was they, two women that taught me taught me some lessons. They taught me what I'm supposed to do with what I got. <laughs> and I'm, I'm still appreciative. <laughs> but in but in seventh grade, that's when I was still trying to figure out, you know, what I'm saying what's the formula. Cause these ladies want something. They, they. I feel like some of them, somebody wants something, but I don't think they want this how I want it. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was intense. And I had found a different. I had found a different. Uh, I had a conversation with someone that will not be named, where they told me somebody I respected, somebody I loved and looked up to, and they told me if you don't, they told me have sex with somebody new every single day of your life. <laughs> and and somebody else was present that I hey, also man, who told you some shit like I, I'm I, not gonna tell you who said it. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you who said it. I was 12. I'm not gonna tell you who said it. But they were like have sex with somebody new every single day of your life. And then the, there was another person in the room that I equally love and respected, and they said, not every day. And then the first person said, all right, well, if you don't have sex with my new every day of your life, then every other day you take care of it yourself. So, you know, sixth grade, seventh grade, I was trying to fucking figure it out. How do I get the booty from these girls? This is crazy. Why are they just letting me have it? Why are they teaching me? So they told you to have sex with someone every day, somebody different every day of your life. Yeah. I'm not going to say who said that, though. How'd that make you? How'd, how'd I... Looking back at it now, how'd that make you feel as a grown man where you at in life now? Well, how how did it make me feel? How did it make you feel then? Or how does it make you feel now? Like now, like looking back at it, like would you would you say, damn, that's I mean that damn, that was that was something fucked up for you to teach a kid, or would you Yeah, well, that, is you something, that, that is a bad lesson. That's not not a great lesson to teach someone uh that age it's not a great it's not a great lesson at all uh you want to let a kid be a kid and talking to them about fucking people you know what i'm saying and how they gotta do it every single day of their life you know what i'm saying when they when they put so much stake in who you are you know what i mean like i put a lot of i put a lot of stock in this person man you know what i mean and so it was like anything they said was law to me no names. I will name no names. Um, but looking back on it now, I feel like had I had the opposite lesson, like, hey, man, you find one person and you stick with that one person. I feel like I would have got married a long time ago. And I probably would have saved, I probably would have saved some people some time. <laughs> In my history, I would have saved some people some time to save myself some time and save some people some heartache. You know what I mean? Because I wasn't a great individual uh, to other people that I had dated. Right. Would have changed a lot of shit, man. So I wonder now, does that, the, the the people who you was in the room with that told you that, do they still have that same philosophy now? I doubt it. I highly doubt it. Highly doubt it, man. That was in, what, the 90s, right? Right. I mean, we're almost at 2023 now, man. You know what I'm saying? It's everything is different bro did you have but, uh, would you have would you having a lot of a lot of uh sex in high school oh yeah man high school was a dark that was my my dark period high school was high school was bad man <laughs> how was it on how was it on tour for you um on tour recently no not not recently i'm just saying like Throughout your like in your younger days. Oh man, um, it was very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was very interesting, man. Lots of fun, a lot of friendships made. <laughs> right. You got another question? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my wife is gonna see this and be mad. Um, how about this? What you got for me? Um, how 
how did you feel the first time? How did you feel the first time that you busted quick? How did it, how did you feel? I probably I don't know. You don't know? Should I probably bust it quick the first time with my, my first nut? Everybody did. But uh shit. I don't know, cuz. Good question. But how do I feel when I bust quick? And uh shit, I just feel like I just want to roll over and go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Sorry, man. I had to be honest. I had to. I couldn't help myself. You got another question for me? Uh, yeah. we need to talk. Yeah, three, minutes. three minutes. Yeah. Uh, uh shit. Um, so where do you see uh, where do you see yourself musically in the next, you know, uh five years? Where do you want to what space do you want to be in musically? In the next five years, I want to have several placements on movie and TV. I want to, uh, movies and TV, uh, I want to have several placements. Um, I also want to have together a pro a EP um, every year, or maybe every couple of years, every two years, maybe. I want to I wanna have an album out every two years, maybe. And I want to be doing shows consistently um, on any scale, on any scale. Even if I'm doing shows, you know what I'm saying, near me, you know what I mean? I want to be doing shows to get a, a better feel for how to work a crowd and be a performer. Right. All right. You got any records with uh, Lil B you dropping? I have a record I'm working on right now that he left behind that I'm just trying to, I'm trying not to fuck it up. You know, the energy that he put in the song was so good. I don't want to give it a, I don't want to fuck up the vibe, so I'm trying to I'm trying to complete it. I got a bunch of his records to, to complete. So yeah, there will be I'm gonna sprinkle them on each project. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. So when when you think when should they uh, be expecting a project or a single or something from you? Man, I was trying to have a project completed by my birthday, June twenty second, but. It just doesn't feel like I'm I'm working with the right producers, man. I mean, the only producer that I really that I really have fucked with recently that is like he's the oh man, he's just so dope, is one of my best friends, Donye G. You know, he's always willing to 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 move a different direction. You know what I'm saying? Like he's always willing to try something different with you. And he, and he always comes up with some fire. Um, so that's really been my problem, is is finding finding the right sound. Uh, for my own projects. Right. All right, y'all. Thanks for tuning in. We got more to come. Thank you, Landon, once again. Shots of Brown. Till next time. We're going to see y'all. Uh...